Hi, this is Josh Olson. You're watching Trailers from Hell. And on behalf of all the white people in Hollywood, I would like to take advantage of this moment to apologize to not just African Americans, but human beings everywhere for the following film. This is one of the most embarrassing movies in the history of Hollywood. This is Mandingo. <laughs> All the shocking realism, all the magnificence and depravity. In Africa, not people born free. That's right. Free men, not slaves. I can't believe this movie ever got made. I mean, maybe, maybe in the 50s, but the 70s, it's, it's insane. This is like one of those movies that devotes an hour and a half to showing you lovingly crafted, gory, brutal violence and then ends with a 10 second uh, thing at the end lamenting the existence of violence in the world. It's just. It totally fetishizes slavery. It's just, it's just this uh, loving portrait of, of mass of slave sex. If, if this is what the South was really like, you have to wonder what they talked about when the war was over, because pretty much all any of the characters in this movie ever talk about is having sex with their slaves. It's based on a series of rotten books about a, um, a plantation called Falconhurst, uh, kind of awful, cheesy soap opera kind of things. And it was made into this big budget, over the top, soapy movie, given the big Hollywood treatment. I mean, James Mason's in this movie, and, it, and it's not like his career was over. He went on to make real movies after this. There you go, Dino De Laurentiis producing it. What were they thinking? The director was Richard Fleischer, done some very fine films. Uh, Mr. Majestic, Soylent Green, New Centurions, The Boston Strangler, Fantastic Voyage, Compulsion, The Vikings, Narrow Margin, Armored Car Robbery, Violent Saturday, where's that DVD, by the way? And a host of other movies I really should be talking about instead of this insane mess. There's just stuff you won't believe. James Mason early on declares that he's got the rheumatiz and uh, someone tells him that the, the way to cure that is to get young slave children to rest under his feet, which he then does. In every scene he's in for the rest of the movie, there's two little black boys under his feet. At the core of it, um, when they're not talking about having sex with their slaves, uh, they're talking about Mandingo fights, which is one of the more bizarre conceits of the film. Uh, the notion that slave owners would take their strongest, healthiest, most vital young slaves and make them fight to the death. This makes about as much sense as uh, antique car collectors engaging in demolition derbies on the weekends. Um, it, it may have happened once or twice. This was not, for the most part, what they did back in those days. Anyway, everything, everything is sort of fine and good when uh, the white masters are raping their female slaves. But when Susan George gets down and dirty with Ken Norton, all hell breaks loose. Uh, it ends up with Ken being thrown into a boiling vat of water and all, all manner of terrible things. There's a lot of, there's even some incest and God knows, it's just uh, every, everything they could possibly throw in is in here. Muhammad Ali apparently was uh, not particularly thrilled with the film and had some harsh words for uh, Ken Norton uh, when he saw it. And you can understand why. I actually did a sequel to this thing called Drum and Ken Norton came back and played, uh, I guess, another character. I've actually never seen it. Warren, Warren Oates is in it. Uh, which just makes me sad. But for all that, and it really is a, an appalling and offensive and terribly racist film, if you're a fan of appalling, offensive, and terribly racist films, uh, it's actually kind of hilariously entertaining in the most repulsive way possible. Mandingo is the first true motion picture epic of the Old South.